good morning and uh, welcome once again to this class where we uh, study about the supernatural and supernatural ministry let's pray and let's get into our session heavenly father we thank you lord for uh, this time we thank you for your word as we dwell on your word we pray god that you will release understanding and revelation to us lord that we can live by this revelation oh god and lord that we can do uh, our work of ministry through this revelation we bless you we honor you in jesus name we pray amen so in the last couple of classes the first session we just talked about why um, is supernatural ministry important what are some of the common objections to the supernatural ministry uh, then we looked at uh, why miracles are necessary what are the biblical reasons what did jesus say about miracles uh, in the second session we spent some time understanding the invitation of jesus for us to be people who walk in supernatural ministry his disciples were sent out and he said that even we who believe you know later on that we too will go out and make disciples along with signs wonders and miracles we also looked at the fact that we are carriers of the sonship glory the glory that jesus walked in he said that he gives it to the believer and therefore we can walk in the supernatural because we carry the sonship glory then of course we have the empowering of the holy spirit the holy spirit is the one who releases the power uh, and uh, we know about the importance of the baptism in the holy spirit acts chapter 1 and verse 8 jesus said you shall receive what yeah with the baptism of the holy spirit what will we receive power you shall receive power do not miss you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you to do what okay signs wonders miracles and healing okay why do we need power to be the witness teacher correct to do the supernatural but also in the same scripture it says you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you you shall be my witnesses so as a witness for christ we preach that that's what we call as witnessing uh, we talk about jesus we talk about his forgiveness we talk about salvation but we also need power to be an effective witness and who is this applicable to one or two believers all to whom was jesus saying that you shall receive power when the holy spirit to the disciples then and later we see you know this promise is for you and your children that's how peter preaches so and all those who will believe we are part of that all those who will believe this is the promise prom promise of the baptism in the holy spirit so when when we have the baptism in the holy spirit you and i can be witnesses with power there is no discrimination or distinction as far as the power is concerned it is it is for anyone who is a believer you and i being a believer we can be witnesses with power but what do we need for that baptism in the holy spirit okay so the ministry of the holy spirit in and through our lives will release supernatural ministry so can you and i once we are baptized in the holy spirit expect miracles to take place we can so when we are praying for someone can we expect for healing to happen yes yes um there will always be you know the accusations or the confusions of the enemy being put in our minds where satan will say oh really you're praying oh maybe you should ask the pastor to pray it won't happen don't worry about all that if god is opening up an opportunity and saying okay you minister we have the same holy spirit and the power of that 
our the holy spirit is what will release the miracle in that situation so we depend on him we depend on the holy spirit power and uh, uh nullify the lies of the devil and minister in the supernatural so every believer every believer can do this we don't see as we discussed earlier in the first session we discussed and said that we don't see clear passages that say that today miracles don't happen right we don't we don't see any place where it says okay now stop these many believers have done and it's going to stop with that no it continues you and i as believers we are called even today to move in the power of the holy spirit and so uh, jesus himself said that you and i can have a supernatural ministry and we have authority authority which has been vested on us uh, we know jesus said i give you the keys of the kingdom so we carry authority authority to release the power of the kingdom wherever we see the rule and reign of satan and his demons we can step in and say hey i carry the rule and reign the authority of the kingdom of god the keys of the kingdom so how do we how do we operate in that binding and losing you bind the works of the enemy you lose the power and the presence you know of of god in that place the word of god and uh, things begin to shift things begin to change but every believer all of us carry the authority of the kingdom so on the basis of all this we were saying that we can have a supernatural ministry so does everyone operate in the supernatural now that we've seen at least four major reasons why all believers have a possibility to operate in the supernatural do we do we operate in the supernatural not all the time okay yeah. not all the time yeah any reasons why why don't we operate it's quite clear jesus called all of us to the super to supernatural ministry then why is it that we are not operating in it okay lack okay lack of faith we can say lack of knowledge those are some answers how about the others our online uh, batch any views on why we don't see the demonstration sister i think we are not uh, seriously taking interest and uh, trying hmm 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 okay thank you sister gertrude um so we are not intentionally pressing into that that's that's correct that's correct though there's a possibility though we have been given what we need there's no intentionality so we are lacking any other reasons mm 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 okay okay so instead of basing our um faith on the word of god we give in to our own thinking and the lies of the devil and that way we miss out on the supernatural show sure. so these are all some of the reasons uh, and in what we are going to learn in the next section here section 2 we will look at certain keys that will help us demonstrate more of the supernatural and in these keys we'll also notice that a few things that we pointed out you know um uh, lack of faith and intentionality uh, and um, uh, not depending on the word how can we overcome all those things and see what are the important factors or foundations that we must lay uh, for a constant supernatural ministry so what are these keys we we'll look at them one by one there are eight that we are going to discuss in depth i am going to read them out for us it's there in our notes uh, on page 6 the top section of page 6 first 
is understanding the realm of the spirit second is faith third is the power of the word fourth is having a renewed mind fifth is the anointing of the spirit sixth is god's presence and glory seventh is proclamation and action eight is persistence so as we employ these keys we can demonstrate the supernatural more and more are there more keys possible there can be so many more keys but these are some of the main things main things that one must pay attention to and as we understand these matters we can uh, flow in the supernatural so key one understanding the spiritual realm this is important for us uh, because the supernatural right it's beyond the natural and so there is the realm of the spirit there's a realm beyond what is perceivable by our physical senses so we as believers need an understanding of that if we only live on the basis of our five senses we are no different than the people of the world all our decisions based on five senses if you see the red sea there is a red sea we can't go to the other side only five senses i can see the red sea uh, and uh, you know so that's my decision i can see the jericho wall that's my conclusion it's too big you can't you can't bring it down i have no experience in uh, you know bulldozing buildings <laughs> so why our decisions are based on the natural but what is that sixth sense that connects you to the spiritual realm is there a sixth sense Hmm? <coughs> yeah mm -hmm. correct so there there is nothing like in scripture that says yeah there is a sixth sense or anything but we generally refer to faith as that sixth sense uh, and we've learned in our course faith last year that one needs faith to relate with god god is looking for faith and uh, and so that's something that we need but what does faith connect us to it connects us to the spiritual realm and the bible describes several laws of the spiritual world now in the spiritual uh you know when when we get a perspective of the spiritual world there are things in the natural that may be impossible but because there is a spiritual realm and god you know is is of that realm nothing is impossible for our god so there is another conclusion that we can come to in such situations like you know you're standing before the red sea a huge obstacle in our lives or you're standing before the jericho walls um you know it again it's it's an obstacle in your in the path to fulfilling the assignment but when we employ faith and we understand hey it my the world is not just limited to what i can see there is a god who can do the impossible and i can have faith in him to see the impossible happen that's when you know the realities of the spiritual realm um uh, are it, it's so real for us that in the natural things start happening you know the red sea divides the jericho wall falls down uh, and so for us as believers we need an understanding of this spiritual realm and the kingdom of god just the way there are laws in the natural world there are laws in the spiritual world you know you have uh, law of gravity uh, what else tell me some laws or principles by which the 
earth is governed buoyancy so many other right like physics and chemistry we we learn uh, different uh, principles theories and the world is operating on the basis of these things we don't see exceptions now unless it's by the supernatural because that's the norm that's how this world functions we could even say every morning the sun rises and every night the sun sets is there any one single day when it has happened the other other way around thank god you <laughs> know uh, but there are laws that's how it operates we cannot expect it to operate any other way in the same way there are laws in the spiritual kingdom or the spiritual world once we understand those laws we will see that things are happening unless we understand the laws in the spiritual realm we will not be able to receive what god has kept for us right see i can't go against the law of gravity i can't decide that okay now i'm just going to like jump from my seat and hopefully i'll go through the roof just cannot happen if i try to do that i'm going against the law it can't happen but the other way will happen you throw something from the top it will fall down in the spiritual world once i understand the law i'll know how it is operating and i can see god at work so what are some of those laws or uh, you know the dynamics that exist in the spiritual realm there are many 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 but we'll talk about a few this morning faith faith right faith the exercise of faith has results so we know in the case of jesus when he went ministering he was looking for faith wherever there was faith there was a miracle you know again mark chapter 5 this uh, lady comes up and touches the hem of jesus's garment she receives right according to her faith whatever she believed she got it jesus saw uh, you know people came to him uh, the roman centurion came to him the canaanite woman came to him he appreciated he said wow i can find faith in you great faith wonderful faith but there were times when his own disciples they did not believe so there was a storm and he tells them where is your faith oh you of little faith peter is sinking in the water oh you of little faith why are you sinking spiritual principles of the spirit world are not fulfilled what is that faith is not in operation peter you're sinking because of that it's a result of not employing faith so you see how faith is operational in the spiritual world when there is faith miracles are happening when there is no faith you no know, we re read right that uh, jesus went in his own hometown people didn't believe him there was unbelief he could not do miracles they didn't understand the principle of faith and they were expecting god to work cannot cannot happen you know a lot of people say uh, like even in church i've heard them say why is god not doing uh, i'm asking him so many times god is not answering my prayer see it's more than just begging god it's more than just like you know uh, forcing god to give us something we need faith we need faith just trust in the lord put your faith in god when we lift when we increase our faith that's when we are setting ourselves up for the miracle instead of begging god every time and wondering i'm begging god why is it not happening you know i prayed so much so many days so many years i'm praying but is there faith jesus is always looking for faith praying a little with i'm not saying that they don't have faith but uh, you're getting what i'm saying right there needs to be faith so instead of wondering uh, why my begging is not bringing the answer when i understand the biblical principle of faith you now i'll pull out some scriptures that tell me that yeah i'm on the right track this is god's word this promise is for me and on the basis of these scriptures you know i'm saying yes lord 
My faith is built up. I have faith. I will receive. Yeah, maybe there's a delay. Maybe there's a waiting period. But the answer will come. So operating on the basis of this principle, faith, um, it's it's very important. It's just like one principle in the kingdom of God, right? Uh, so when we want the supernatural to manifest, what we are saying is we must understand the spiritual world and its laws. We can't operate outside the spiritual laws and say, God, give the results. Got it? So there is a need to understand. So we said faith. Faith is one important uh, principle or law, the exercise of faith, which is required. Now, what happens when we employ these principles? Something is happening on the basis of the spiritual realm in the natural realm. So in the natural realm, there may be a lack. In the natural realm, you know, there may be a confusion. In the natural realm, um, there, there may be uh, sickness, anything, right? Anything is there. But when we are operating in by the law of the spirit world, the results come in the natural through the spiritual. So there are two kingdoms which are operational. Okay. And uh, here's the interesting part. You and I, believers, we are in the natural, but we are also part of the spiritual world. Got it. So it's like saying amphibians. You know what that is? Amphibians is like the creatures that live uh, outside of the water also and in the water also like a frog. <laughs> so you're in the frog, but you're outside as well. You can be in both places. You're made to, you're designed to be part of both places. So we're in the natural, but when we are constantly aware of the spiritual, we are bringing from the spiritual through the laws. We know the laws. We know how to operate in the laws. And we are bringing in the power from the spiritual into the natural. So for a believer, we have to learn that. We uh, uh, firstly recognize that the, the supernatural, the spiritual kingdom or God's kingdom can override. Override means sort of um, rule and reign over the natural. Whatever is existing in the natural, it can do a wonderful work beyond that. right? So we recognize that. And so we don't just take what's happening in the natural as a final. But how do we know? How do we know? You know, with circumstance uh, to assess and say, okay, we need God's intervention in this. As we study the word, as we walk with the Lord, we will understand. We are not saying that, you know, one needs to do something unscriptural. No, not at all. On the basis of God's word, we will recognize, hey, in this situation, what is going on? You know, as we said, lack or uh, sickness or confusion, strife, whatever. It's not from the Lord. So we want the spiritual to override the natural, apply the principle of faith, the law of faith, make it happen. What are some of the other laws? You know, other laws would be things like the power of words. Words. You know, we keep saying that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So that's another law. Now, I cannot disregard the law, uh, I cannot disobey the law and say, why is God not doing? Because we've not employed the law. So if I'm constantly saying, you know, um, negative things and uh, confirming my unbelief with my words, and I'm saying, God, why isn't this miracle happening in my life? It's because of my words. Okay. But on the other hand, if we are employing this law of speaking the right words, what starts to happen? We suddenly start seeing results in the natural realm. You know, we, we declare, we command, we speak faith where there is no faith and things turn around. Right? There's a miracle that takes place. 
So, again, the spiritual world is overriding the natural world because you and I are understand. Firstly, we are aware that there is a spiritual world. The natural is not, not the final. Second is we are understanding the laws. Faith. This time around, power of words. Worship. You know that song, I raise a hallelujah. The person who wrote it, you know, he writes about how when a child was very sick, they wrote that song as a battle cry. So when we are praising God, when we are worshipping God, what does the law say? That's a victory for us. You know, Jehoshaphat's example, they went in with worship and they had military victory. So we understand the spiritual law and the principle. We exercise it in the natural. So we are worshipping here. We are praising God. And what can happen through it? When we are fulfilling the law, results will come. Okay, we suddenly see God is working. Um, some some ways made earlier there was no way, but now suddenly there's an option. Right? God has made a path in the wilderness for us. But how did that happen? Through the spiritual into the natural, employed the law of worship. Now people can ask, no, I don't want to do all these things. Faith, words, uh, worship, God should do. I don't care, but God should work. We're not operating in the laws, just like the natural world. If we don't understand the law and know how to use the law, it will not work. So as believers, as believers, understanding these laws and then applying them becomes so very important. So what are some of the other laws? Other laws could be um, things like uh, uh, obedience to God, you know, walking right in righteousness. When we do those things, God says, yeah, I'll protect you. I'll help you. I'll guide you. Uh, you, you will become the head and not the tail or take up laws like diligence, hard work. Why is it that the people of the world, they're working hard and they're getting, uh, uh, you know, accolades and recognition? It's a law. Sometimes they also know some of the principles and they're applying it in the financial world. They're applying those principles. They're reaping the fruit of it. Law of honor. When you honor people, when you honor, uh, uh, you know, uh, those that God has put in our lives, we see our relationships are thriving. They, they are doing well. Laws. This is how life works. Uh, and there are many such laws in the spiritual world. When we go by them, there's always victory. There's always victory. So as a believer, I need to be aware there are these, uh, there is a spiritual world and there are the laws of the spiritual world. Authority. Spiritual believer's authority. That again, once I understand it, I can start to apply it. Um, there are other things like sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping is when, you know, we say, when we sow to the spirit, we reap of the spirit. When we sow to the flesh, we reap corruption. Scripture tells us that uh, when it comes to giving, you know, the Bible says, give and it will, uh, you know, be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. So these are the laws. And we're operating in those laws. So understand the spiritual realm and the laws. And through that, we will find victory in our natural circumstances. Um, there are also angels that God has deputed to uh, serve the believers. Where do we see this? We see this in uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, where uh, it says that angels are uh, sent to aid the heirs of salvation, meaning the angels have been sent to help us who are born again. So God can even send angels. They are from the spiritual world. They're from the spirit realm, but they can help us. Uh, in our pursuit of God's purposes in the natural realm. So how to uh, activate these angels from the spiritual world? How do you think we can activate them? We've spoken about this earlier. Yeah, sure. So we can pray to God. That is one because he's the commander of the armies. Uh, any other way?
through scriptures yeah some uh, 103 and verse 7 it, it just uh, tells us that they heed the voice of god so when we speak god's word that's a command for the angels to get active and for the angels to begin to do you know whatever they need to in that situation so basically we need an understanding or an awareness of uh, how we can bring the power of the supernatural in our natural realm. Okay, so any uh, thoughts regarding what we've heard so far or any questions even from our online class here? Sister, I have a question. Yes, yes, Sister Gertrude. Uh, yeah, like in the Old Testament, the supernatural miracles that happen, I mean, now we don't uh, see those kind of miracles. Like we see healings and uh, other type, but not like in that magnitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, what would be your question, Sister? Yeah, I mean, why don't we see those kinds of miracles now? Okay. Presently. Okay. okay. Sure. Just. Mm -mm. Okay, so sister, I'm just trying to find us a scripture. Yeah, this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 7. Uh, sister, I'm going to read it for us. But it says, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the of the spirit not be more glorious, more glorious. So what is uh, Paul saying here? He's saying that the ministry that took place under the Mosaic covenant, it was glorious. Like what Sister Gertrude pointed out, there were miracles, uh, there were wonders, uh, there were amazing things that took place, but they were all under the old covenant. And, you know, there is a distinction now because now after the Lord Jesus came and we have redemption and grace, verse 8, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? So whose ministry are we under right now? We are under the ministry of the Spirit. And Paul is saying, what should be the characteristic of the ministry of the present times? Under the spirit, more glorious, more glorious. So if you and I lived during, you know, Moses, Joshua's times, it would be awesome, right? It would be awesome to see uh, the giant slain and uh, uh, manna being rained down from heaven and water coming out of the rock. It's glorious already. It's amazing. We may not want to give give up that you know swap that uh, time in history for anything else because it's already amazing but what paul is saying actually now when we are under the ministry of the spirit 
what we must experience today must be much more greater more glorious than what they experienced so sister what i'm trying to say is yes they experienced all these powerful things but we are supposed to experience more glorious things that's what the bible says under the ministry of the holy spirit so why are we not seeing these things uh, there can be many answers you know one of course is faith and uh, that all of us must grow in our faith and we know the you know, scriptures talk about uh, bringing all of us uh, to the unity of the faith in ephesians chapter 4 we read that that god puts in the church uh, the fivefold ministry offices so that everyone can be brought or they can be grown matured into the unity of the faith so in a sense sister gertrude um it's happening we are all being raised in our faith you know god is working god is at work everywhere and people believers we are learning about who we are in christ our authority in christ the power of the word and uh, we will see we will see where many more miracles take place i i hope that answers your question sister please let me know yeah yes yes sister mm -hmm. okay good. only i was thinking of the magnitude the miracle those uh, miracles took place that sort of miracles are not uh, taking place right now i mean yeah. there are uh, yeah that magnitude is not there the way the red sea parted and you know mm -hmm. those were that that's what i was saying comparison okay 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 so yeah in like the natural uh, world natural elements were involved and we could look at them and say yeah you know those are huge miracles i get it uh, however what the bible says is we are supposed to have more glorious miracles now <coughs> and we will we will we are uh, and as we continue in, in the word of god you know god is building up his church he's strengthening his church preparing it such that many wonders take place many miracles take place thank thank you sister thank you yeah me. yeah thank you thank you sister gertrude yeah really good question yes yes please akil to add to what uh, sister getsut was saying so on the uh, natural eyes i think we do not uh, see those things uh, you know the red sea partition and uh, you know uh, a rod turning to a snake or anything for us to believe but if you really look on a personal level whatever red sea is that we go through in life yeah. and uh, when you really look at it it is much more personalized compared to just having one view and you know feeling that uh, yes it is something that we really uh, you know see that individually in our experience that more personally yeah lives. yeah so even to to uh, i am just thinking uh, state that uh, this miracle is bigger than that it's very subjective maybe for a person getting healed of a sickness would be greater than seeing the red sea part who knows you know so yeah i i get that right all right <clears throat> Yes. i want to say sister that um, yeah. uh, the other day i i already mentioned in one of the class that i went for the healing and deliverance ministry mm. and i got healed of my sciatica problem which has no permanent uh, remedy for it but mm -hmm. uh, god knew every detail that my nerve was compressed and which leg and i and i got healed of it and also the skin infection i had i was not aware of it but god knew my skin infection i mean the omniscient god that we serve he knew such small minute details that was a real miracle in my life sister praise god praise thank god you. yeah thank you sister gertrude very encouraging to hear what god has done for you and thank you so much for sharing that Sister, even I have a testimony. What we faced yesterday, when mm. we were about to cross the road, me and my husband on a two wheeler, mm. uh, suddenly a car and uh, all the vehicles started off. I thought uh, there would be a big bang. I will be on the road, literally falling down. 
to my amazement i was sitting on the vehicle it just touched my knee that's all all praises to god good oh yeah yeah arrow skip yeah yeah praise god praise god thank you uh, lucy for sharing what the lord has done so it's amazing it's amazing to see what god is doing in our lives let's expect more of it and um want to encourage us you know god is a big god he is a great god he gives us big dreams and visions uh, let's not be limited by the natural world and the senses of the natural world there is a spiritual world our god is a ruler and uh, you know he he, he is reigning uh, in our lives and as we learn to operate in the laws of the spirit world we will override the power of darkness you know the things that are happening in the natural world so always look for that that okay is this it or is there something more that we can receive from the lord from what he has already given us yeah uh, akil last i just wanted to add like just like what sister lucy is shared now mm. uh, in life no many times we see certain things happen yeah and then we feel like yes uh, i've gone through a situation and then god has a uh, uh, thing correct me if i'm wrong uh, pastor it's like yeah. many times in life we do not see things that have actually not happened to us yeah and even in that way it's like you know we have to be much more grateful rather than only uh, okay. you know experiencing it uh, thing isn't it not true that you know yeah, there are yeah. so many things that happen to Correct. us which there are many we things are we don't totally unaware unaware of and those. god has really protected us kept us away from sure sure yeah i agree with that thank you and daniel uh, daniel oliver is sharing here saying he had a gall bladder stone uh, and it's no more so <laughs> praise god you know uh, god is at work uh, in all of our lives we'll wrap at this point and i want to request someone from the online batch to lead us in prayer shall i sister yes yes sis lucy father god thank you for your word oh master lord as you are leading us into the into the supernatural ministry through your word guidance oh father god we seek more of your anointing in our lives oh master lord as you guide us and teach us oh father lord as we receive your word oh master lord help us to be the help us to be the children who reveals your work to the people in and around us oh master lord so that it will be sealed in our mind and our mind in our mind and hearts to declare your word to the nation to declare your works to bring the supernatural works of your kingdom on to the earth oh master lord in binding and losing the works of oh, father lord jesus lord jesus thank you oh master lord for teaching us your word and to guiding us to end, uh, walk in your word oh father god in jesus mighty and holy name we pray amen amen thank you lucy thank you everyone god bless you have a good weekend i'll see you next week